Love them or hate them, you have to admit, Google has done an amazing job with Google Maps and how it integrates with the entire Google ecosystem. I'm constantly blown away by the different things that we can do with Google Maps. So today I thought I would share with you what, what, one, two, three, four, five, five things that I think are really cool about Google Maps that you may or may not know about. That is today on Dotto Tech. Steve Dotto here. How the heck you doing this fine day? Google Maps is our topic today. Google has done an incredible job with Google Maps. There are so many layers to what is in Google Maps and how it integrates with the Google ecosystem. Almost every time I dive into Google Maps and start poking around and exploring, I get lost for quite a bit of time and I'm constantly impressed by the technical, the technical skill set that Google brings to the play, uh, to the table in Google Maps. So today we're gonna to take a look at five different aspects or different tips that I have as far as using Google Maps. Now you may know some of them, but some of them you may not know or you may have forgotten about. Now, one thing I will point out is Google Maps is not necessarily a completely equal player in both desktop and mobile version. The mobile version, as you do probably, I typically use for navigation. I use it when I need it to get to a location. I don't spend a lot of time exploring on Google Maps on the on the smartphone application. However, on the desktop version, when I open Google Maps, even if I'm looking for direction somewhere, I start to explore. I use the different views, I use the different layers, I use the different features, and I spend a lot of time just poking around in Google Maps when it's on the desktop. So we're gonna start with that. We're gonna start with uh, the desktop version or, or the, uh, the browser-based version of Google Maps. And what I'm gonna share with you is what I think is a tremendously useful extra feature, and that is, the ability to measure distances. Let's have a look. Of course, we all know that when we use Google Maps for directions, for turn-by-turn -turn directions to get somewhere, it gives us the distance and the estimated time that it's gonna take us to cover that distance. But Google Maps will also give us distance as the crow flies, which is really useful, especially when we use some alternate transportation methods. For example, I've got a little boat that we run around the Vancouver area in, 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 in the interior, uh, and I was thinking about doing a day trip from where we live to, uh, to another community on the Fraser River. And I don't know how far that's going to be. I want to figure out exactly what the distance is to determine whether or not, A, it's a good idea for me to take my boat on that trip and roughly how long it will take and how much fuel I might require. So let me show you the process. It is very cool. What we're going to do is we're going to start with uh, a beginning point. location. Now, this is actually where we would end up putting in right here. That's a, there's a little boat launch right here. And in, in right here, I'm going to right click my mouse. Watch this. I'm gonna right click my mouse and here in the pop-up, I have the opportunity to measure distances. <laughs> you, when you first find this, you're gonna play with this so often. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go click out here in the channel and it's gonna take me from that starting point out into the channel. And I'm gonna zoom out a little bit and I'm gonna start my journey up the river. Where I wanna go ultimately is up to way over here, New Westminster, where it is right there. There's a key here that I wanna get directions to. So I'm gonna go up the Fraser River here and I could just click my mouse and it's going to drop kind of waypoints that measures the distance of each of these different legs. And we'll take the south arm of the river on the way up. It's a little wider channel. Uh, and we're gonna go up there. And then we will zoom in a little bit to kind of bring us right to, and where's the key right there? There's the waterfront park and the key, Lonsdale Key Park right there. So I'll just go to right there. And so I see it is 17 kilometers from that point to that point. So, it, so I can figure, okay, that's not too bad. That's not too bad. It'll take me about an hour or so at a reasonable speed, at a nice slow speed going up, which is, and I've got plenty of fuel in my boat. That's gonna be a trip that I think I could do. And if it was, if I discovered it was like really long, I would be, then be able to rethink things. So this ability to be able to measure distances as the crow flies is a feature built in to Google Maps. But there's a kissing cousin of this feature, which I wanna show you. And for that, I'm gonna change our view. I'm gonna switch over to the satellite view and I'm gonna zoom in on just somebody's house. I don't know whose house it is. I'm just gonna zoom in on a house. Let's zoom in on a house in Richmond somewhere here. Let's zoom in on a house. Now, uh, I love the satellite view. Do you, have you looked at your house in the satellite view? I've looked at my house many times in the satellite view. But let me show you something which I think is uber cool. If I had, say, oh, these houses aren't perfect. Oh, here's one, this, this one will do. If I had, a house, like this house here. And I had the backyard. They say I was gonna be fertilizing my backyard. And it, the, on the bag of the fertilizer, it tells you how much you should be doing per square meter 
or per square foot. But I don't know what the square footage of my yard is. I, I just don't know that. Um, I guess I could go outside with a tape measure, but this is so cool. Right click your mouse, measure distance one more time, and just frame the area that you want to measure the square footage of, the area of. And when you complete, it gives you down here, see this? The distance, the total area is uh, 1300 square foot or 130 square meters. That is phenomenal. That is so useful for a variety of things. Uh, maybe this homeowner uh, needs a new roof and uh, they are getting quotes from the roofing companies. And they say, well, what's, how many square meters is the roof? They're going to ask you that because it's going to do the quote. I don't know how many square meters my roof is. So once again, we'll do quickly, we'll measure the distance and we'll frame out in this time, in this case here, a slightly different quite a complex area. And here we go. It's actually 3,200 square feet or 303 square meters. That is the measurement capabilities that's built in to Google Maps. But this ability to be able to measure distances accurately for planning or for just plain curiosity, <laughs> just an awesome feature. Now, changing the view that we did as it's measuring the distance from the map view to the satellite view so we could actually measure the rooftop the rooftop area or the yard area, that gives, shows us some of the different views and the different ways that Google gives us to be able to view the same information. So we've seen the satellite view, we've seen the map view, but if you look down here in the bottom of the screen, you've got the little guy, the little stick man, the Google stick man, which as you probably know, if we drop on the map, we'll give us something called street view, which is the street level view of the location that we're looking at. And we've probably by now seen the Google cars going by that are doing the 360 photo photographs of an area. But let me show you an additional feature that's built into Google street view, which, ah oh man, I just love. I'm gonna go back into my old neighborhood, my old haunt, and I'm gonna scroll in on my grandparents' house. And there is my grandparents' old house right there. I'm going to drop the street view right there. This was Nona and Nono's house. And I'm going to drop it right there. I believe that is it. Let's take a look here. And is that it? Yeah, there it is right there. So here is my grandparents' old house that I grew up visiting. It was walking distance from where we lived. And there it is right there. Oh, that brings back memories just looking at that. Actually, my dad built this house, so it's a, it makes it even more special for me. So if you take a look at street view of any location, if you look up in the corner here, there's a little clock. And that allows us to go back and see within Street View when Google began taking pictures of this particular location. And you can go back in time and see what it looked like, in this case, back as early as 2009. And this, uh, <laughs> I just love this. So let's take it. Let's go back to 2009 and let's take a look at, oh yes, what a difference. And look, the houses have been replaced. But this really brings back some memories. I'm actually feeling a little bit emotional because this is what it looked like back, a lot closer to what it looked like when my grandparents lived there. And if we scroll forward in time, we can see the same location. Uh, just how many years? Just uh, two years later, they tore down the house on the right-hand side and they built a bigger house. And then two years after that, uh, they... You see the trees are growing up. The tree is blocking the view of my grandparents' house. Let's scroll over. There it is. And let's go two more years down the road. The house is look, their house is looking remarkably similar. Still the same, but look what happens now. When we move up to closer, ah, here just a couple of years ago, they started taking down other houses in the neighborhood. And this is typically what happens in my in Vancouver. And oh, here, construction in the house next door. But Nona Nono's house is still in place. You can go to any location on Google Maps, drop down in the street, have a look around, see a 360 degree view of that location, and you can see what it looked like as back as now, as much as in this particular case, uh, 12, uh, 14 years ago, you can see the history. So Street View is another one of the real gems that you, that maybe you aren't gonna find super useful, the Street View history in Google Maps. There are gonna be cases, of course, where it is useful, but just for nostalgia purposes, just to go and look around. This is what I mean when I say, when I look at Google Map features, I end up just browsing and exploring for a long time. Street View, Street View history is one of the things that I always spend time with. 
One thing that always impresses me with Google Maps is its integration with the other applications in the Google ecosystem, specifically Calendar and Gmail, and how it integrates between your desktop and your mobile version through your Google account. So the next thing I want to show you, I'm going to actually not start in Google Maps, but instead I'm going to start with a kind of a real world scenario about how Google Maps can integrate in this entire system. So I'm going to create an appointment. Let's say that we, I've got a meeting coming up next week at our local um, at our local Institute of Technology. So I'm going to add a location and I'm going to type in BCIT. This is just a, a local school, a local technical college. And let's say that I have a meeting there. Now, look, as I start to fill out in Google Calendar, mind you, the meeting location, I have an option to preview this in Maps. And if I tap on that, out comes a little sidebar that shows the location in Maps. If I choose directions right here, it is going to give me directions on how to get from my location to BCIT. Now it gives me transit directions. It'll give me driving directions. It'll give me walking or biking directions. It'll give me all those different directions. And I can add them back into the calendar. If I say, well, I'm going to choose driving because that's the way I want to go. I'm going to add those back into the calendar. So now it is living inside my calendar so I can view it in my calendar as well. But look at this. This is where it gets really cool. I can send these directions to my phone. And you can see I get a notification right here in my phone that I've got directions to get to BCIT from my location. Now, this is where we, this is so cool. If I scroll down to the bottom of these directions, look at the option that I have here. This is something which I really like. It says, remind you to leave on time. What Google Maps will do then is it is talking back and forth with Google Calendar. And here's the dialogue that's happening. Steve has to be at BCIT at 10 a.m. Google Calendar to Google Maps. Google Maps says, oh, okay. And it checks the current traffic time. And it says, well, in that particular case, we better remind him to leave at 9.15 because there's heavy traffic and it's going to take more than 34 minutes. So I'll get a notification on my phone. You know how you get a notification, you have a meeting in 10 minutes? I'll get a notification, you should be leaving now in order to make it to your meeting on time. How cool is that? This integration of our apps talking to each other through the Google ecosystem. So the integration between Google Calendar on our desktop, Google uh, Google Maps on our desktop and our smartphone and the way they talk back and forth. <laughs> it's just, I, it's so cool. You gotta say, it, it's cool. Before I leave this direction screen, there's one other thing I want to show you is the, uh, if I scroll up to the very top, you see this image here? This is a elevation gain. That's because we have chosen cycling in order to get there. That's the map that I actually ended up sending. Uh, but it's it's uh, another additional feature that Google Maps recognizes. If you're biking, what are you concerned about? Turn by turn directions, of course. But going up and down hills, that's a big deal on a bike. So this tells us what the elevation gain is and where it happens in the ride so that we're prepared. That's another nice feature. And that, this, that ability within Google Maps to be able to choose your mode of transport from public from pu public transport and it's constantly updating based on the times that the transportation system is delivering through to walking through to oh even ride share how much in, in an estimated cost if you're using ride share so you've got all of these additional features to get there on your smartphone that are built in to google maps oh, you're going to be glad you stuck around because i think this last tip that i'm going to share with you might have the biggest impact on your lives long term and that is using location sharing within Google Maps, uh, with especially with family and friends. Now, there's two ways that I know of that you can share your location with others using Google Maps. You can drop a pin, which puts a, a, a location where you are, where you happen to be, and you can choose to share that by clicking and tapping down and holding on that, clicking share, and that will then share that location. So if you're at a bar, if you're at a restaurant, and you want to let a friend know where you are, you can drop a pin at the location, and you can share that location with them as a one-off. I'm here right now, come see me. And that's not a dynamic link, it's just a directions to that particular location. Other location features are dynamic. In other words, when you move, when the phone moves, the location will move with you, which is a great way to be able to keep tabs on family and friends if they're moving around and you need to know where they are. If you're at a, a large 
uh, amusement park together, you can be tracking each other that way. And let me show you how you invoke that. You tap on your profile picture and it with under the profile, you will then find your options. And if location sharing is available in your location and it's not available worldwide, some jurisdictions don't allow it for privacy issues, but if it is available, you tap on location sharing and up comes your in in instructions. You share your location. You choose within your list of family and friends who you want to share your location with, and you choose the duration of how long you want to share. This is a great safety feature. It's a great convenience feature. This past Christmas, my kids were home for Christmas and one of my daughters was going to visit friends of hers, but there was a snowstorm. She was a little bit nervous driving out there. So she turned on location sharing so we could track her journey out to her friend's house and make sure that everything was okay and we could find her if we needed her. There's a lot of ways that you might want to use location sharing and within Google Maps in the whole Google ecosystem, we have the option to be able to do it. It is, it, it, I think it provides a level of safety. It provides a level of security. It uh, provides a massive level of convenience and it is just straight up cool tech. There are lots of cool features in Google Maps. And if I haven't touched on your favorite feature here in this video, please, in the comments, please share with me your favorite Google Maps feature. Maybe it will be the basis for a future video here at Dottotech. And I hope you found this video to be useful and enjoyable. And if you have a like and a thumbs up and a share would be greatly appreciated as well. Please don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Now, before we leave, one last thing. Every week here at Dottotech, we host a free weekly tutorial webinar called Webinar Wednesday, where we teach some aspect of productivity or content creation. The link is right here. I encourage you to join us. They're free, they're awesome. I'm sure you'll have a great time and I would love to see you. Till next time, I'm Steve Dotto. Have fun storming the castle.